Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at creating this rainbow swath effect with all of these different sparkles jumping off it. Pretty easy effect to create, but we're going to use uh, some kind of cool techniques to get to this finished product. And here is another take on it, uh, really using the same exact method, uh, but you can get a lot of different looks using this particular method. So I'm going to close these two down and we're going to start by going File, New, and I'm going to create a new document sized 845 by 475 and RGB background content's white. We're actually going to change the background right away uh, and resolution of about 72. Hit OK and here is our document. Now what I want to do is go ahead and select my foreground color and I want to set this to a dark gray right about there. And I'm just going to go Alt Backspace. That's going to fill my entire uh, document with that gray. I'm going to open up my dock over here and you can see our background layer is now filled with gray. What I want to do next is go Filter distort lens correction and the lens correction here is going to basically allow us to add a vignette to the edges I'm gonna check off the show grid so I can see my full document without that pesky grid I'm gonna slide amount over to the left and you can see we're getting a nice strong vignette hit OK and voila we have our vignette the next step is going to be create a new layer here's our new layer and we're gonna grab the gradient tool right over here move up to the control bar up here and select that gradient bar which is gonna open up the gradient editor. Now, you don't need to worry about any colors here. The only thing you want to do is come into here and change gradient type to noise. And you want to set the roughness to between 50 and 75. Here I have mine set to 70. That's just fine. All of the different colors here in the RGB color model, fine. And you can hit randomize a few times. And you're just looking for color, a lot of difference in color. You don't want a lot of solid patches of color. So once you get a gradient that looks like that, like this one, eh maybe right here this one looks fine hit okay and I'm gonna pull down from the top I'm gonna hold down my shift key and I'm just gonna pull straight down from the top and there we go a very interesting gradient and we want to get rid of all of the color we want to hit control shift U that'd be command shift U on the Mac so now we have a very nice mix here so now that we have all this variation variation in different grays and whites I want to hit command or control T hold down my alt or option key and just drag that top center handle down all right, just kind of crunch that together a little bit. Right click here on this and choose perspective. And I want to drag this top right corner up. And I want to drag the top left corner down. All right, cool. And then I'm going to choose skew. And I'm going to choose the left center handle. I'm going to drag it up to the top left corner of my document. And select the center right handle. And I'm going to pull it down to around you know the bottom right hand corner of my document. And I'm going to right click and choose warp. Now, what I want to do is create a simple S-curve kind of running like this. All right, running the way my mouse is, if you can see that. So I'm going to pull my warp handle over like so. I'm going to pull this warp handle up here and just kind of really play with, play with the warp and, uh, you know, look for something that you like. What I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out, actually, and pull this guy right down over here and pull this guy out over here. There we go. Pull the center area down. And I'm going to pull this tangent handle way in over here. And the same for this guy over here. There we go. And rotate these tangent handles so they, you know, set this. Almost pouring down out of that top corner is the way I want this to look. All right, there we go. Cool, looking good, looking better. I'm going to pull this tangent handle up a little bit. Give us a little bit of variation, and I'm going to hit the check key. All right, there we go. So we now have our initial smooth lined shape happening here. And now that we've done that, we kind of have a pretty important thing we need to do. We need to bring up the levels dialog, image adjustments levels, and we want to flatten this out. We don't want it to be quite as contrasting as it is. So I'm going to select the black handle down here in output levels, and I'm going to boost that a little bit to brighten them up. You can see it's really killing off some contrast. We don't want there to be a lot of solid white or solid black. We want there to be a lot of mid-tone grays, a lot of just not perfect middle grays, but not white, not black, anything in between. So we're going to hit OK once we've done that. All right, great. Now we're going to create a new layer. Here's where it gets kind of fun. We want to grab the brush tool, and I'm going to choose a hard-edged 60-pixel brush, and I'm going to boost it up to, yeah, right around 130. Again, hard-edged. And what I want to do is go Window, Swatches. It's going to open up my Swatches panel. And I want to pick maybe three or four different colors here. So I'm going to start with a pink. And I'm going to paint pink up here in this top corner. 
like so. And I'm gonna grab an orange, and I'm gonna throw some orange in there. Maybe we'll go with a touch of red through the middle and then immediately follow that with, well, not gray, or green, excuse me, yellow. And a little bit more pink, and then a whole bunch of orange here to finish us off. All right, so now that I've done this, I, what I wanna do, I'm gonna close the swatches panel, but I really wanna blend all this color together really nicely. So I'm gonna go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm gonna blur this to death. I'm talking maybe 100 pixels of blur, Eh, maybe not quite 100 pixels of blur. Let's see what 75 does for us. I think 75 is going to be good. We're going to hit OK. And you can see that we can really see through this now. That's not quite what I wanted. I want to make sure that this is a pretty intense color effect. So I'm going to hit Command or Control J, which is going to duplicate that layer. Stack up that lack of opacity, doubling the opacity. Maybe do that once more. Command or Control J. And you can see we've got a nice solid uh, set of colors here. Now I'm going to select the top layer, hold down my shift key, select this layer down here, and then hit command or control E, which is going to merge all of those layers together. Great. Now that we've done that, let's see about intensifying the contrast on this color layer. We're going to hit command or control J, and then just try setting this to overlay. I'm going to shut that layer off, turn it back on. Eh, I don't like it that much, so I'm going to drag it to the garbage. All right, now that I've done that, all I want to do is hold down my alt or option key, and hover between these two layers and click. That's gonna create a clipping mask. It's gonna clip our color to the layer beneath. Great. Now that we've done that, I want to go ahead and set this layer to the blend mode of color. You can see we're getting a little bit of color here. Great. Now what I wanna do is go ahead and drag this layer down to the new layer icon. We just duplicated the layer, and I just wanna set it to overlay. All right, really increase that contrast. Maybe overlay's a little too much. Soft light looks just perfect. It looks nice, smooth. We get this nice, smooth, flowing fountain of rainbow color. Really, really nice. Next, we need to go ahead and create a new layer, and we're ready to tackle the last step of creating this effect. We're going to buzz through this pretty quickly here. So, all you want to do is grab that brush tool again, and you only need a default hard edge 60 pixel brush. That's great. And we're going to select this right here to open up the brushes panel. You can also get to this by going window brushes. And what I want to do here is check on shape dynamics. And with shape dynamics, drag your size jitter to 100% and angle jitter to 100%. Actually, with a perfectly round shape, angle jitter is not going to do us anything, so you don't really need to drag that up. Uh, if you have a tablet, I suggest you set control to pen pressure. That'll help out, give you an added element of control. And we're going to set scattering to right around 700% along both axes. And uh, count, leave that at 1. We don't want to have an overload of spots here. All right, so I'm going to drag that brushes panel out of the way. I'm going to reach over, grab my tablet, and I'm, I want to make sure that I'm painting in white. You can see right now my foreground color is orange. So just hit the X key. That's going to give you a foreground color of white, well, if your background color was white. And I'm just going to lightly drag across there. That's a little bit too heavy. I want to go light. There we go. Nice and light. And then I'm going to press down hard as I approach the base here. All right, we're going to apply a few other strips. There we go. And maybe a couple little bits popping off of this. There we go. Great. Now that we've done that, I want to immediately duplicate this layer before I do anything so I don't lose my initial set of bubbles, if you will. So I'm going to hit Command or Control J, and I'm just going to shut that layer off. Great. Select the layer below and go Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Now remember, 75 pixels we did before. That's way too much. So I'm going to do something like 5, and that looks pretty good. We're going to hit OK. And then we're going to go ahead and hit Command or Control U. It's going to bring up our Hue Saturation dialog. And I want to give this a very light yellow color. So I'm going to first check on Colorize. And I'm going to drop the brightness to around negative 30. And I'm going to boost the saturation way up. You can see by dropping the brightness of something that's white and boosting the saturation, we're actually able to add some color. And I'm going to move it over and try to find a nice yellow. And that's still a little bit too intense. Uh, so I'm going to actually lighten that up. There we go, a nice really cream, cream slash tannish yellow. Hit OK. And we're going to go ahead and set this layer to something like overlay. Let's try overlay there. That's pretty nice. We're going to turn our white layer on on top here. And we're going to try overlay. I don't really like that. So I think I'm going to set it back to normal and just drop the opacity to something like 30. There we go. And then we can even duplicate this layer, Command or Control J, and just set that to something like soft light, just to give an added bit of effect. And there you have it, this really simple color swath with this bubbly effect.